I am a woman of color who has experienced racism. It is extremely painful when you realize that someone has prejudged you because of the color of your skin. When I was a child, I witnessed the violence of a cross burning in my front yard and the fear that act of hate generated. I experienced pain, humiliation, and shame when I was attacked by neighborhood children and teased at school because I was biracial. I observed my parents' frustration and anger when they were denied housing. Times had changed by the time I became an adult because of new protections that made discrimination illegal and politically incorrect. These protections, born from grassroots campaigns manifested by human rights and social justice activists and organizers, continue on today giving the underrepresented a voice. Have you ever experienced fear, pain, humiliation, shame, frustration, and anger because you are a person experiencing homelessness? A few months ago, I moved from Seattle to Beaverton, Oregon. As I search for work and community to connect with, I travel back and forth to Portland where I volunteer at Sisters of the Road and have been warmly welcomed. The other day, my neighbor, a woman who describes herself as a liberal weekend pirate, who takes great pride in the phrase, keep Portland weird, was talking with me about the relaxed culture and how many miles she logs on her bicycle every day, blah, blah, blah. I thought she might be interested in the work that Sisters is doing, you know, since she's so liberal and progressive and all. So I shared the idea of holding an educational fundraiser in my home. I thought it would be cool to have one of the Empowered Voices Media Project storytellers show their work and discuss the issues impacting homelessness with my guests over dinner. The goal would be to create dialogue so that people who are unfamiliar with the issues surrounding homelessness will become more educated then become part of the solution. I smiled, thinking that it was a cool plan. However, my neighbor looked me in the eye, not with the anticipated response, but with an expression of disbelief and fear. In a clear voice, she said, you are going to have homeless people in your house? Excuse me, what did you say, I replied, giving myself a second to compose myself as the image of a cross burning ran through my mind. Completely bypassing the shocked expression on my face, she repeated herself, but what I heard was, you're going to have black people in your house? I shook my head and thought, uh-uh, okay, Miss Liberal and Progressive, bring it. Instead, I asked in a calm voice, what's the problem here? That's when she realized what she said was not politically correct, so she started to backtrack Oh, well, um, you know, um, it's just that was all she could say. So I cut her off to keep her from further making a fool of herself. I asked her if she knew any people that had experienced homelessness. She said no. I asked her if she was free for lunch tomorrow and invited her to meet me for lunch at Sisters, which to my surprise, she accepted. The next day at Sisters, we approached the lunch line two older men stepped back and said, ladies first, with a smile. My neighbor raised her eyebrows in surprise. As the cashier took our order, I checked my pockets and realized I didn't have any money with me. But before I said anything, one of the men pulled out a full 25 cent punch card and insisted I use it because, he explained, he had a surplus he had earned working at Sisters as a volunteer over many years. I accepted the card and smiled, knowing that what was happening was changing a stereotype today. We sat down at a table where two men were sitting. They looked up briefly from their meals and nodded. The man next to me must have been very hungry because his face was all in that plate going to town. He was completely absorbed with the meal. As we ate, my neighbor and I bantered back and forth. Toward the end of the meal, the man next to me popped his head up 
and made a witty remark in relation to our conversation. He caught us by surprise and we laughed along with him. We finished our meals and as my neighbor walked out the door, she thanked me. She didn't admit that she was wrong, but I could tell she learned something new that day.